Well, the Colorado Buffaloes were that lucky team to win the Deion Sanders lottery. And Dion has come in and flipped Boulder completely upside down. It is an entirely new roster in Colorado, and there are very differing opinions on what year one is going to look like for Coach Prime in Boulder, Colorado. So will the first year be a rousing success, and will Colorado be one of the very, very surprising teams in 2023, or is this going to be a year to sort of figure things out at the FBS level for Coach Prime uh, and for his entirely new roster here in Colorado. What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome to my channel. I'm predicting all 133 FBS level college football teams this summer, which means I'm doing your favorite team. So hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when that video gets uploaded. But there are more ways than that to help me support my channel. You're doing one right now by watching the video, and you can do more by liking, commenting, subscribing, and really doing anything else you guys can think of to help me support my channel. Whatever you guys are able to do, I would be greatly, greatly, greatly appreciative uh, for you guys doing so so let's talk about coach prime's buffaloes here in 2023 how do preview predictions work this season i'm glad you asked let's go through them we'll go, we're gonna go through a roster overview take a look at who the team lost who's coming back and who's coming in through the transfer portal and recruiting class and my oh my there's a lot of them for this colorado team uh, and then we're gonna take a look at the 2023 football schedule give it a good old game by game preview and prediction so without further ado Let's talk about the Buffaloes in 2023, and for the sake of this video, I have to say there are a lot of names on this board. A lot of them freshmen, but a lot of them are transfers. There are very few returners to this team. I'm not really going to be going over a whole lot of stats, and I'm going to try my best uh, to tell you guys where these transfers are from, but there are a lot of them. If I told you where every single transfer is from, we'd be here for 30 minutes. So we're going to go through some of the more notable ones. Buffalo fans, if you guys have more, put them in the comment section below. But here we go. Let's get into it. Your quarterback room looks very different as JT Shrout, Owen McCone, and Maddox Kopp have all seen their way out the door. That was your three leading passers for Colorado last season. In comes Shador Sanders. Of course, Deion's son, transfer coming over from Jackson State. And then you get a freshman coming in as well by the name of Ryan Stodd, uh, a three-star rated freshman coming out of West Ranch, California, or coming out of West Ranch High School in California. California Shador is obviously going to end up getting that starting job, but uh, we'll see what, what, what he is going to be able to do here for this Buffalo's offense in the running back room. Uh, well, not a great room last year, but you do lose a lot of pieces. Uh, in fact, Dion Smith, Alex uh, Fontenot and jail stacks are all going to be gone off of this running back room. Anthony Hankerson does come back, was that third leading rusher last season. And you get some transfers coming in. Alton McCaskill comes over from Houston and, Keviasi Smoke comes over from Kentucky in the wide receiver room. Jordan Tyson, Montana, uh, Lamanius Craig, and Daniel Arias are all gone off of this wide receiver room. Uh, Tyson, uh, Lamanius Craig, and Arias were your top three receivers from last season. And you get a lot of transfers coming in, as is the story with this Colorado team. Jimmy Horn, I believe, is coming over from South Florida. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. Xavier Weaver coming in, as well as Willie Gaines, and some freshmen by the name of Dylan Edwards and Adam Hopkins enter the mix for this wide receiver room as well. You Tight end room, wearing, really not where a whole lot of notable transfers come in. You do lose Brady Russell, but you return Caleb uh, Fuaria and Eric Olsen. Uh, you do get some transfers in the tight end room. Just I think those are more notable guys there that are returning for this Colorado team. Offensive line-wise, you do lose Casey Roddick and Jake Wiley. However, you return uh, Gerard Christensen, uh, Lichtenhan, and Van Wells, and get some transfers coming in. And Tyler Brown, Landon uh, uh, Bebby, and Savion Washington coming into this program as well. So defensively, now what can we expect with Colorado? Well, again, pretty much everyone gone off of this defense. Terrence Lang, uh, Jalen Sami, uh, Chance Main, Naeem Rodman, and Tyus Martin are all gone off that defensive line. However, you get a lot of nice pieces in. Derek McClendon comes over from Florida State. Savelle Smalls comes over from Washington. Leonard Payne comes over as well. And yes, there's a second line of transfers here. Jordan Dominic, Shane Cox, and Taj Wallace all come in for this defensive line what i think is going to be a pretty solid defensive line this season in the linebacker room you do lose josh chandler Samedo, who was your leading tackler last year with 96 tackles three and a half sacks did have a pick last year quinn perry robert barnes and guy thomas also all leave this uh 
linebacker room. You do return a guy by the name of Marvin Ham. However, most of it are transfers. Des Moines Kennedy, a four-star rated transfer, comes in from Alabama. Uh, Vonta Bentley and Jeremiah Brown all transfer into this program. Now, in the defensive back room, uh, you do lose Jeremy Mack, Nico Reed, and Tyron Taylor. However, Trevor Woods, who was your second leading tackler on this team last year, does come back. 79 tackles did have an interception last year as well. And you get a highly touted, highly recruited player when he was out of high school in Travis Hunter. He, of course, comes over from Jackson State. Miles Slusher coming over to this team as well. As well as you flip a freshman coming over. Or Travis Hunter, I should say, was a highly... Uh, I'm going to backtrack for a little bit. Travis Hunter was a highly recruited freshman, now five-star rated transfer coming over uh, by way of Jackson State as well. But then you also get this freshman coming in by way of Cor Cormine McClain, uh, a, a guy that can be a really, really good corner originally was supposed to go to Florida then really fooled everyone in committing to Miami and then once coach prime entered Boulder he went and flipped his way over to go with coach prime as well and, and let me get something straight to to a lot of you seeing wow that's a, a lot of transfers this is not a mix and match team here Deion Sanders really got the guys that he felt were going to help this program succeed he wanted true ballers true players go back to some of his speeches he made in the locker room his opening time there he got his guys and this Colorado team is going to be very competitive all season long your head coach of course is coach prime Deion Sanders offensive coordinator Sean Lewis and defensive coordinator is Charles Kelly so without further ado here is the Buffalo's 2023 football schedule any game in home that you or uh, any game that will be played at home will be underlined. Any game on the road or in italics or the slanted text. Any game in green is a game. Okay, I see the Buffaloes being able to win easily. Any game in yellow is okay. The other team's going to put up a fight, but Colorado will still win. And red is a loss. So without further ado, what does 2023 hold for Colorado? And honestly, before I even dive into predictions, and I will say this at the end too, this team could be really, really good, or this team could also be really not so great record-wise. However, let's dive into predictions here. TCU is a team uh, that is coming off a very surprising national championship run, had a phenomenal regular season, got past Michigan in the semifinals, uh, and then ended up getting absolutely throttled by Georgia in the national championship game. And I think Colorado going on the road is not going to have much luck with TCU. Now, there is a team that has to replace a lot of pieces, including quarterback uh, Max Duggan. Uh, and TCU, I do not think, is going to be walking their way into a national championship game this season. However, when I do look at this TCU team, still going to be a really solid team out of the Big 12 Conference. Uh, TCU, I think, will beat Colorado in Week 1. And I think Nebraska will beat Colorado in Week 2. When you take a look at this Nebraska team, Matt Rule coming in. He's getting Jeff Sims, a Matt Rule system-style quarterback. He can run the ball, throw the ball transfer coming over from Georgia Tech to couple with some amazing talent that is at Nebraska already. Yes, there are things to improve upon and there's a culture shift to be made, but I think Nebraska has the makings to be a really solid team this year uh, in Colorado. I do think we'll lose that game at home to Matt Rule and company. However, I do think Coach Prime gets his first win as an FBS head coach against the Colorado State Rams, uh, a team that I think Colorado, again, this is a rivalry game. I think they're going to be able to overpower and win that game. Now getting into Pac-12 play, and you have a very, very tough Pac-12 schedule coming up here. Of course, you do lose or you do avoid playing Washington, but you got to play a lot of some of the other big boys, including Oregon and USC. And I think I do think you lose both of those games. You lose to Oregon because, hey, you get Bo Nix back at quarterback. He could be a Heisman dark horse. There are a lot of great pieces on that offense, as well as some good transfers coming in in that defense. Yes, it had some questions, but they are loading up on transfers on that side. Really good transfers, might I add, there as well. So Oregon, uh, I think, is going to be too much for Colorado to handle, especially on the road. And USC is an interesting one here because I do think Colorado can keep pretty much every single game on the schedule competitive, including this one right here. But Colorado, or I should say USC on offense alone, should be able to win this game. And while that defense did improve, they did get a, a lot of depth. That offense is just too good. They got a really good wide receiver room, pretty good running back room. Your Heisman Trophy winner, Caleb Williams, does come back at quarterback. That's just a really, really good USC offensive team, and they're going to be able to overpower Colorado here. However, Colorado does bounce back and beat the Arizona State 
Sun Devils. Now, Kenny Dillingham is coming in as that head coach there, and quite simply, it came down to, okay, which new head coach do I think will have more success? I think that's going to end up being Coach Prime. I do think that this Arizona State team is going to be a team that maybe needs some time to start to get things going. Uh, however, when you take a look at some of this talent that's on this team, there's a lot of good pieces that are there at Arizona State already. I just think it's going to take time for it all to gel and for Kenny Dillingham uh, to get used to uh, putting on the headset as a head coach. Uh, so I think Colorado's going to be able to win that one there. And then I think they beat Stanford easily, one of the worst teams in Power 5 this year, in my opinion. Troy Taylor's got a long rebuild process ahead. Colorado beats the Stanford Cardinal. Uh, and then after their bye week, they go on the road, play a very tough game against UCLA that I do think they drop there as well. Taking a look at this UCLA team, look, they got a lot of very solid options at quarterback to be able to replace Dorian Thompson or Robinson. Carson Steele comes in uh, after Zach Charbonnet uh, is gone off of this team and a lot of nice pieces defensively come back. I think Colorado, again, makes it competitive, but UCLA gets the win at the end of the day. Same sort of story with Oregon State here, although for different reasons, right? Colorado's going to make this game very, very competitive. And if Colorado's going to be able to pull off a big win this year, uh, I'm talking like a ranked opponent win. It could be a lot of people on this board, but I think most likely it's going to be this game right here against Oregon State that I think is going to be really good this year. DJ Uliangalale comes in at quarterback. We know what he can be when he is at his best. They got a stud in the running back room in Damian Martinez. And while the defense is replacing some holes, a lot of talented pieces there on the defensive side. So Oregon State, I think, beats the Buffaloes. And I think Arizona beats the Buffaloes there as well. This is an Arizona team that, granted, is replacing a lot, a ton defensively. However, when you look at that offense, they got really good pieces in the wide receiver room. Jaden Delora is back at quarterback. That running back room is pretty solid as well. So Arizona offensively, I think, can give Colorado a lot of struggles. Uh, and, and be able to win uh, that game there. Uh, and then Colorado goes on the road to play Washington State, and I think they dropped the game there. My apologies, that uh, date should be uh, November 17th, not the 18th. Apologies for my graphical error there uh, in Week 12, that game against Washington State. But when you go ahead and take a look at that game, Washington State, same sort of story, right? They're replacing a lot of talent on that defensive side. However, when you take a look at their offense, Cameron Ward does come back at quarterback, and there are a lot of new pieces in that wide receiver grouping, but they should have been able to form chemistry with um, uh, Cameron Ward well before this game takes place. I think Colorado loses on the road to Washington State, and then they lose on the road to a Utah team that I think is going to be very, very physical uh, and Cam rising at quarterback. I know he's coming off knee surgery, but when you take a look at that team, I think they're still going to be a very physical defense, and with the experience of Cam rising, I think Utah is going to be able to walk away with a win there, which leads me to a record of three and nine for Colorado. Now, I do not think the floor is much lower, but the one thing you have to realize about this Colorado team, and I said it before I preview and predicted each and every one of these games, if all of these transfers work out and this Colorado team just gels immediately, maybe they pull off a week one win against TCU, um, watch out. Uh, Deion Sanders, I think it's going to start winning very, very quickly and uh, while I don't necessarily think it's going to be this year, as you see here, Deion Sanders is the coach that knows how to win. He's going to start winning very, very quickly at the power five level. I just do not think it's going to be this year with the strength and power of the Pac-12 conference. You got some really tough out of conference opponents here as well. So that's my prediction for the Colorado Buffaloes in 2023. Definitely could go either way for me. Could see this team surprising a lot of people or I could see this team what I'm predicting them to do here. Let me know your thoughts on the Buffaloes in the comment section below. Big sleeper team in the Pac-12. And remember to always play hard but tailgate harder. See all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.